Hi, I'm Brent Russell, owner of Tarrant County Pest Control, and welcome to part two. Uh, this is B1, uh, recognition of pest and pest damage. Okay, now let's take a look at a really interesting video of about how carpenter bees live. Carpenter bees will bore into a piece of wood, then they'll turn at a 90 degree angle, and they'll go down through the chambers laying eggs and then sealing off the chamber and going to the next uh, chamber and doing that on down through. So somebody here has taken a branch that had fallen and carpenter bees got into. That's something else you want to know is that carpenter bees get into dead wood, not living wood. So this was a dead branch he'd picked up and then cut open. And it's really interesting to take a look and see how these bees live. In early June this year, I pulled a dead and detached limb from a white pine tree in my yard and saw this perfectly round 9 millimeter hole in it. Last year I found such a hole in my potting bench of pressure treated lumber and learned that it was the nest of a carpenter bee. I am an old biologist at heart and wanted to examine it more closely. As dead and dry as the branch was, I was surprised at what I found. First off, the bee was still inside and seemed in no hurry to come out. I was not aware that these bees sting very rarely and I was being overly careful. In fact, I was afraid to let it out. You can hear it buzzing inside. The bee flew away before I could get a photograph, but I have every reason to believe it was an eastern carpenter bee. I was surprised, but should not have been, to see how far the creature had tunneled within the branch. I cut away what I thought was excess wood with some pruning shears, only to find I had cut through a brood cell. Having already made a mess of it, I proceeded further. Near the center of this picture, you can see where I used my bandsaw to cut across the branch. As luck would have it, I cut right across the septum that divides two brood cells. Look what popped out of the distal one. This grub was alive and very active. When I accidentally cut across one of these with my saw, I found that they were just sacks of fluid, white creamy liquid, and I wondered where all the water came from. The cells contained residual granular material that I originally thought was sawdust, and small dark cylindrical objects that I assumed were frass or fecal material from the grubs. I suppose in retrospect it is possible that some of the powdery material was residual pollen. The female bees store pollen and nectar in the cells to provide nourishment for their developing grubs. On the proximal side of the cut, that nearest the hole, there was another grub and he was quite active. I used my bandsaw again to try to divide the limb longitudinally, but I made a mess of it. Here are three pieces of the entire tunnel. Uh, on the left you can see where I, I cut through with the shears and uh, on the right where I cut with the bandsaw. There were nine cells in this uh, tunnel. Each was 20 millimeters long from septum to septum and about 13 millimeters in diameter. The developing larvae or pupae uh, furthest from the hole were the best developed. The question in my mind is how do these better developed uh, larvae get out without plowing through their younger counterparts? I hope one of you experts out there clears this up for us. This is the entrance chamber beneath the hole. It was pretty clean without any evidence of having eggs laid in it or grub development. The bee creates the septums between the brood cells from tiny pieces of wood that it has chewed up. The insects in the cells furthest from the hole were the best developed. The head on this one is on the right and you can see its mouth parts and its antenna. 
what will become its wings, are becoming darker in color. In one cell, I could not identify a developing insect. I thought perhaps this lump represented a dried out and decayed larva that had died. In retrospect, I wonder if it might not have been the original wad of bee bread in a cell in which the egg had not hatched or survived. Again, perhaps one of you experts can comment. But if this was bee bread, it might give some indication of the volume originally placed in a cell by the female bee. I am sensitive to the fact that eight or nine carpenter bees were harmed in this non-professional examination. I am in awe of the amount of work that is accomplished by these industrious creatures. I hope you've learned something too. All right, now we're going to talk about cockroaches. Yeah, I know cockroaches. Nobody wants to talk about them. They're gross and disgusting, but if you're going to be in the pest control business, you are definitely going to have to learn how to work um, with cockroaches and identifying them and getting rid of them. It's a, a big part of the business. So, with that said, um, let's get started. So, cockroaches are found throughout the United States. Although they have not been found to transmit disease organisms, their movement in food preparation and serving areas allows the spread of pathogens that cause diarrhea, food poisoning, and uh, dysteria. They contaminate food with their droppings, their bodies, and the bacteria that they carry. As we all know, cockroaches are disgusting. So technically, they don't actually carry diseases, but they walk through stuff like rotten food, and, and then they'll walk on fresh food and carry um, the bacteria and spread that. So it's very important uh, to get rid of cockroaches around food handling areas. Uh, cockroaches have what is known as chewing mouth parts. They feed on various plants and animals. Uh, some cockroaches feed on, on food like we do, while other cockroaches mainly like to feed on dying and decaying organic matter. And we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, here is a photo of the chewing mouth parts that cockroaches have. Some insects, like uh, ticks and mosquitoes, have sucking mouth parts, and other insects have chewing mouth parts. Well, cockroaches have chewing mouth parts. Cockroaches prefer warm, dark, humid conditions and are often found in sewers or in cracks and crevices around cupboards, drain boards, and baseboards. It's very common to find cockroaches down in the bottom of um, refrigerators because it's hot and it's humid and there's usually some moisture to be found down in here. So if you're looking at a house that has a cockroach infestation and you're having a hard time finding where they're coming from, uh, the refrigerator, that back and the bottom of that refrigerator needs to be one thing that you should check out for sure. The cockroaches have three distinct life stages and here is a photo that shows you the life cycle and those three stages that they go through. The stages are the egg, there's several nymph stages that they go through, and then finally the adult. Now the fertilized Adult females produce these small little bean-like capsules that contain many little eggs inside of them. Here's a chart that's showing you those little capsules um, that hold the eggs that the roaches lay. And if you uh, can study this well enough, you can actually identify these roaches by these little capsules that they lay the eggs in. 
So take a look at that and uh, know that uh, these little things that inside of them are the eggs and there could be 20 or 30 uh, cockroaches that hatch out of each one of these little, uh, they lo it looks like one egg but it's actually a little capsule that holds several eggs inside of them. The nymphs emerging from the eggs resemble adult cockroaches but are smaller and have undeveloped wings. Cockroaches undergo several nymphal stages before reaching the adult stage. The life cycle may require three months to three years depending on the species and the environmental conditions. Well, there are about 3,500 different kinds of cockroaches in the United States, but here in Texas we have five cockroaches that are very common and one of them that's known as an evasive species. So let's take a look at those. So this first one that I refer to as an evasive species is something that you might not ever see working in Texas. Listen to this. One such invasive species of cockroach has been detected in Houston and it appears to be thriving along Buffalo Bayou west of Interstate Highway Loop 610 down in Houston. It is the Asian cockroach. It closely resembles the German cockroach but is definitely different by its behavior and the underside of its wings. The Asian cockroach prefers an outdoor habit, is attracted to lights, and is a strong flyer. So it's real important that we're able to identify the species. Um, in this case, the Asian cockroach. Here's a photo of the Asian cockroach. You can see that it looks a lot like the uh, German cockroach. So it's very important that we can identify the species properly so that we can treat it properly. Look at this photo of this Asian cockroach. You can see what we look for on the, uh, on the head of a German cockroach, and that's those lines. And look at this other photo. When you look at that at first, I would think that that's a, a German cockroach by looking at the head on that. However, the body is a little bit uh, different. If we take a look at a German cockroach, um, you can see they do look very similar. And here's another photo of the German cockroach. But you can tell the body's a little bit shorter. Um, and these cockroaches are not found in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, only down around Houston. So uh, the German cockroach, on the other hand, is something that's found um, everywhere, all over Texas. Um, we see them quite often. It's probably one of the most common roaches that we see um, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And also one of the probably the hardest ones to get rid of. So uh, there again it helps to be able to identify the roaches. The, these roaches are mainly are, they're going to be inside uh, in dark damp areas um, and the uh, Asian cockroaches you usually find are going to be outside and they fly really well. Take a closer, closer look at this German cockroach. So the German cockroach is the most common cockroach species in Texas. This cockroach is light brown with two dark stripes running lengthwise on the head and the thorax. Adult males and females are winged but they rarely fly. They're about uh, half an inch long. German cockroaches thrive in all types of buildings and are often found in kitchens in homes and commercial food establishments. Of the commonly encountered cockroach species, German cockroaches produce the most offsprings. The female carries its eggs, egg capsule until just before the nymphs hatch. I can tell you for sure that these German cockroaches are the ones that will get completely out of hand. These are the ones that you go to an apartment 
and the apartment will be infested with them and it just seems impossible to be get, to get rid of them. If you go to an apartment or a house and you open up a cabinet and hundreds of little about half inch sized cockroaches with two lines on their forehead start running all over the place, these are German cockroaches. They are very difficult to get rid of. They take some really um, specific type of treatment that we'll talk about later in treatments. Um, but you want to make sure that you take the time that you've identified them properly and that you charge the customer appropriately because you're going to have to take some extra time to get rid of these roaches. As a matter of fact, you better build in to your price going back a few times and having to do some retreats and some follow-ups before you can really get a handle on these, on these roaches. But the good news is they can be gotten rid of. Uh, if you follow the, your labels right and you do the procedures right, there's no reason you can't get rid of a German cockroach infestation as long as you have some uh, cooperation from the people that you're treating as well. So, good luck with the German cockroaches. Let's take a look at the American cockroach. The American cockroach is the largest of the common house infesting cockroaches. It is reddish brown with a light yellow band around the edge of its head and in adults which fly occasionally the wings are covered or the wings cover the abdomen. Okay. The easiest way to be able to identify one of these cockroaches is first of all by the size. These are going to be the big ones. If you get somebody that tells you they've been seeing big, huge cockroaches, it's probably either an American cockroach or a Smoky Brown. And here's how you're able to tell the difference between the two. Look at the head of the cockroach in this picture. You can see the light colored band that goes around the head. Here's another photo where you can see that band around the head even a little bit clearer. That's what you want to look for. If you see a big cockroach that's about an inch or inch and a half long, maybe even two inches long, uh, that thing, and it's got a white or light colored band going around its head, that's the American cockroach. Now these cockroaches are very, very um, popular. They're, they're everywhere. I see them all the time. Almost every house I'll see some American cockroaches. Um, these are the kind that they like. They feed on dying and decaying organic matter. Um, so the bushes around a house, those leaves that fall underneath those bushes as they're uh, dying and decaying, that's a perfect food source for these roaches. So what will happen is these roaches will be in the bushes and the shrubs all the way around the house. Then during extremely dry conditions, these um, roaches will move into the house looking for water. And that's why they're commonly referred to as water bugs. The other reason that they like to call them water bugs, of course, is because nobody wants to admit that they actually have roaches in their house. So it's a little better to say, oh, I have water bugs, not roaches. But actually, the American cockroach uh, the, uh, is a water, the water bug is actually a cockroach. So, now the good news about the American cockroach is these guys are actually pretty easy to get rid of. Uh, typically, a general pest treatment uh, will, will take care of them. And even though they look really bad and, and, and uh, people just hate them, um, they're actually much easier to get rid of than a German cockroach infestation. Now let's take a look at the brown banded cockroach. The brown banded is a light gold to glossy brown cockroach. It is um, similar in size and shape to the German cockroach. Now you'll see these and they have a band that goes, if you look at this photo you can see that band that goes across them and they're about the same size as a German cockroach so sometimes you look at it and you might think oh these are German cockroaches but if you look at the head on this thing and you don't see those two lines like we did on the German cockroach then you know that it's not a German cockroach so there's a good chance that it's a brown banded um, so the thing that you look for 
are these lines that go across the body from side to side, not lengthways, but from side to side. The brown-banded cockroaches prefer starchy foods and need little water. They are usually found scattered throughout homes, apartments, hotels, and hospitals. The oriental cockroach, not to be confused with the Asian cockroach, which was the first one we talked about, um, that you don't see very often, it's only in one place in Texas. This is different. Now this is the oriental cockroach. Uh, here's a photo of it. You can see it's a, a dark colored. Uh, oriental cockroaches are a glossy dark brown to black. The wings of the adult male cover one half to three-fourths of the abdomen. The female has rudimentary wings that are reduced to mere lobes. Neither sex can fly. So I don't see a lot of the oriental cockroaches. Uh, however, I do come across them once in a while. And so if you look at it, and it kind of looks like you might wonder if it's a brown bandit or not when you first look at it, but it's going to be a little bit bigger usually and you won't see the stripes on the head and you won't see the stripes on the body and so if you just see a dark uh, medium-sized cockroach with no stripes on it and it's almost a dark brown almost black or maybe even black then it's a good chance that it's an oriental cockroach it's interesting to note on this photo of this oriental cockroach you can see that there's an egg casing still attached to the back of her. Now she will carry this egg casing until it's fully developed and then release it. And now finally the, uh, the last of the most common uh, roaches that we see in North Texas is going to be the smoky brown cockroach. Now the smoky brown is the one that looks a lot like the American cockroach, the same size. Uh, sometimes it's actually hard to tell them apart if they're not in the adult stage because in the instars they can look very similar. So the smoky brown is a very dark brown uh, cockroach. The adults are about three quarters of an inch to one inch long and they have long wings and they're good flyers. Smoky brown cockroaches prefer an outdoor habitat, but move indoors during seasonal migration and adverse weather conditions. So it seems like uh, the hottest part of the summer and the coldest time in the winter is when you're going to get these guys moving into the house. Also when it gets real dry, just like the American cockroaches, the reason they call them the water bugs, they come in looking for water these guys will do the same thing. So they're very, very commonly confused with an American cockroach. It uh, doesn't really matter because the smoky brown and the American cockroach, you're going to treat them the same way. They, they both die uh, pretty easy. They're nothing like trying to fight the German cockroaches, which are just a nightmare to get rid of sometimes. But the, uh, the smoky brown is pretty easy to take care of with a general pest treatment and maybe a perimeter spray around the outside. Um, so the, uh, the main thing to remember on the smoky brown is it looks just like the American cockroach, but there's no line that goes around the top of its head. And if you take a look here, here's a photo of um, the smoky brown. You can see there's no lines around their head, but there's also some of the younger ones in what's called the different end stars of their, uh, of their age. And you can see here that when, as they're growing up, some of those actually almost look like an oriental cockroach. Um, so before they reach the adult stage, sometimes it's really hard to tell just what they are. So that brings up a good point. Um, when you first are identifying cockroaches, sometimes you can't just look at one and assume that that's what it is. You might need to find a couple of them to be able to confirm. Um, some of them can be very hard to identify when they're in the early instars or the early stages of their life. Okay, so let's recap for just a minute here. So cockroaches, they're dirty, they're nasty, they're disgusting. They don't actually carry disease, but they can carry bacteria and spread uh, sickness. Um, they're uh, prehistoric. They've been around since before mankind, and they'll probably 
uh, be around after we're gone. There's, they're just they're survivors, and they always will be. Um, <clears throat> one cockroach, when they lay one of those little casings, has 30 or maybe more eggs inside, and they can lay one of those every day. So every day, that's like laying 30 eggs. So you can see in just three days, you've got almost 100 more roaches that have been, been laid. So they can get out of control in a hurry. Uh, we've also learned that not all cockroaches are, are the same, and meaning that some of them are, are get out of hand a lot easier and they're much harder to kill. German cockroaches are very resilient to a lot of the pesticides that are out there today. So it's very important that when we go to a cockroach uh, infestation that we first of all identify exactly what it is. Um, these um, cockroaches in Texas, the, the big water bugs, the really big ones, the droppings from those cockroaches can be, they're, well they're actually about the same size as mice. So I've actually had people call me mice when they actually had um, American cockroaches or the smoky brown. Both of those cockroaches uh, lay droppings that look just like mouse droppings. So I've had customers that had put out mouse bait in the, the little decon mouse bait that you can buy at the grocery store in the little pellets in a little box and they'll be sitting out <clears throat> and they're said that they just keep seeing more and more droppings and what they're actually doing is they're feeding the roaches because the roaches don't have blood and the way that the uh, rat bait kills mice is it uh, kills them through the, the poison that gets into their blood. Well, roaches don't have blood, so it, they're just feeding off the organic material that's in that rat bait, mixed with that rat bait, and, it's, and they're fine with it. So um, it's important that you go to a house, and if you see these droppings and you see the, the people are telling you they got roaches, and, and you see the little decon thing sitting out, um, you might assume that they've got, uh, or, or, or they're telling you that they have mice. You're going to assume they have mice, but you got to take a look at that and see. And the way that you do is when you look at the droppings, you need to have something like a, a magnifying glass or, or a little uh, jeweler's doublet, something to look at this real close. And there, there's an old saying that we say in the pest control business, and that is roaches have ridges. So if you look at those droppings and you don't know if they're mouse droppings or roach droppings, if they have ridges on them, those are definitely roach droppings. Um, that will help you greatly. Uh, you go into a place and you're trying to get rid of mice and you just keep seeing droppings over and over. It can be very frustrating. And then you can realize, oh, you're fighting uh, the, the wrong you know, battle here. So there again, it's very important. The first thing that you've got to do when you go into a customer's house is you have to identify uh, what it is that you're you know, getting rid of. And, and so somebody says that we're, I'm having roaches, that's not good enough. You need to ask them some questions. Have you seen the roaches? When did you see them? Where did you see them? Is there a dead one? And then look and see if you can find some. Technically, in the state of Texas, and if we're going by uh, the, uh, the label on these pesticides, we cannot treat a pest that we cannot find. So if you go out to a house and a customer says, I have uh, fleas, and you can't find fleas, you cannot do a flea treatment at that house. You have to be able to identify the pest and before you treat for it. So, roaches can uh, be very difficult in identifying if you, um, if you can't find them. Because people will just say, I have bugs. Well, bugs can be a lot of things. It could be beetles, it could be ants, it could be who knows what. And when these roaches first hatch out, they um, are as tiny as an ant, and then they grow some of those, to, like the American cockroach can be over an inch long. Um, so you'll see those American cockroaches in all stages. You'll see them from everything from a real little tiny that almost looks like an ant all the way up uh, to the full size um, in an adult stage of a, of a cockroach. So it's very important to identify the pest, to, to find them, I mean, maybe even find more than one species because if you find a, a cockroach in an early instar, it's not going to look uh, like it does in an adult stage and you might misidentify it. So uh, a good thorough inspection, uh, take the time to find uh, the target pest and what's really going on in the house. It'll help you do a better treatment 
Uh, your customers will be happy and, and you'll be able to take care of the problem for them.